I just woke up. for Gibson and I could not find this place and I was driving in from St. Louis and I really thought that my boss was playing a joke on me because I couldn't find a store and finally I drove down the street and I, oh, there it is. And I walked in here and I couldn't believe it, man. There's just guitars everywhere and Steve opened arms for me and uh, I think the first thing he said to me was, uh, are you, you ain't no vegetarian, are you? <laughs> I remember that. Around here, are you? <laughs> <laughs> you look like you're from California. <laughs> What's your name? From Texas.
because there was a koa. So this is a J45 right here, koa. Usually they're uh, spruce top with mahogany back in size. Uh, but this is uh, koa back in size and spruce top. Is that right? It's a Edward back. Uh, which is unique. I, this is the first time I played on one like this. Uh, Koa has a very interesting tone to it. About J45 went back, uh, I believe in 1942. It's called the Workhorse. And it was sold for $45. In the good old days, right? Acoustic uh, guitars that Gibson makes is the way they project. I don't, uh, I don't know how many of you guys out there own a Gibson acoustic. Is anybody sitting out there? I know you do. Uh, when I used to do trainings with these guitars, I would, I, that was the one thing that I would sell people on them with is how much they project just by hitting their G chord. up it's real nice it doesn't distort out it projects really really nice so I used to take a songwriter deluxe at that time which I think was right around 15 1600 I don't know where they're at right now but uh, this is a few years ago and I would take like a five thousand dollar guitar I won't mention the name of the company but I would hit that guitar and it would not project as much as the Gibson would and, you know, to me, acoustically, that's what you want. You know, you can make up for it, you know, with electronics and stuff like that, but, I mean, it's an acoustic guitar for a reason, so you want it to project and to sound like that, you know. And that was the main attraction for Gibson Acoustics to me. You know, we make uh, square shoulder guitars, rounded shoulders, which is what this is. Our square shoulders are like your hummingbirds, uh, songwriter, and then we do a jumbo series, you know, our J200s, uh, J185s, and then we do our uh, parlor guitars, which is like what Robert Johnson used to play, the double O's and stuff. Those are all amazing guitars. And each one of those guitars distinctively sound amazing. I mean, they all project very, very well. And, you know, these guitars are an investment. You know, what... what uh, what really freaks me out is every time, I've been with Gibson for quite a while, I, I, I learned on Gibson guitars. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm guilty of playing other guitars as well, but uh, I always go back to Gibsons, and I've been playing on them for a really long time now. But the one thing that uh, amazes me is when I do the factory tours, every time. Uh, these guitars are all made in Bozeman, Montana. All our acoustics are. One of the main reasons for that is there's no humidity. Uh, the guitars that we build in Nashville, there's tons of humidity there, so everything has to be kiln dried, uh, you know, to get all the moisture out of the wood right so that you can build it. And uh, in Montana, they just, the wood just lays up on the shelves, they pull it off, and they, you know, they make it to whatever specs they're working on. But the amount of time that goes into these things, these things are handed down workstation, workstation. These necks are cut from a blank and then buffed out all by, you know, a machine, but a guy doing it, you know. Uh, the CNC machine will cut, the, cut out the holes, you know, got to have that done. But everything else is done by hand as far as the inlays, the frets, uh, the setting of the neck, which is very, very important. The bracing of the guitars, which makes each one of these guitars uh, sound amazing, you know, especially a guitar like the Songwriter. Um, it has a, what's called an top X bracing in it, which is what's like in our, our jumbo guitars. So it projects like like crazy, you know. So you put a nice pickup on that, and you got a, got a great guitar, you know. <laughs>
Anybody got any questions on Gibson guitars? Good thing you added that in there, huh? <laughs> no. I was going to ask you how your tour was. What did you play on tour? What guitar did you play? I played Gibson guitars on tour. <laughs> I thought you did. I just got back from a really, really cool tour, actually, uh, over in Europe. I uh, wasn't playing much acoustic guitars, but uh, I played all Gibsons. And uh, it was funny because the other side of my stage played Schedgers. And every night my sound man would go, my sound man was from Japan. And uh, he'd be like, you tell him to get on Gibson. Gibson much better. <laughs> You still, what's your amps? What, are you still playing through your white Les Paul? No, I have a black one now. Oh, oh okay. You said that one for a long time. You that one for Just a got time. it. No, it oh, okay. The white Les Paul left, <laughs> yeah, yeah. left my possession, unfortunately. Ooh. And I started playing a gold top, a 57 reissue, uh, and that guitar is, I hate to say it, possessed by the devil. <laughs> it plays, plays itself, man. But uh, when I was over in Europe, I had it set in my mind, when I get back, I'm gonna get a 58 Terry Sunburst Les Paul Standard. It's what I always wanted. 1958 was the first year of Terry Sunburst Standard, so it was a really important year to me. And uh, the whole time I was over there, I kept seeing guys playing black Les Pauls. I was like, man, I, I used to have one of those. That would be kind of cool. And uh, I was in Belgium and I was watching a Doors documentary and Robbie Krieger was playing a brand new 68 Custom. And I was like, man, that's it, I gotta get one. Well, when I got back to the States, we were up in Memphis having a meeting and I asked one of the custom shop guys, hey, I'm getting ready to do a lot of videos for you guys, man. What guitar would you, you know, want me to push out of everything that you guys got? And he said, the new Black Custom. <laughs> so a light bulb went over my head. Okay, now I know how to get me one. Uh, but it's a fantastic guitar. It has a, I don't know if you have one of those in here, Steve, but it has a rich light board. And uh, it's amazing. Uh, one of the things Gibson started doing last year was experiment with different types of new fretboards uh, because of some interesting things that happened to us. And uh, <laughs> it's kind of a good thing in a way because uh, we started experimenting with woods like baked maple. And, and Rich Lane, and, uh, and I really like them. I cannot tell the difference between Rich Lane and Ebony, I can't. And I learned on Ebony. I've been playing guitar for close to 30 years, and uh, it's pretty amazing that a man-made material like that, you know, sounds as good as, as that does. Um, so, and, and at least we got a good thing. You know, leave, leave that up to Henry to pull out a good thing out of something bad, you know? Uh, which he did, which was wonderful. Um, so yeah, any other questions? Hit me with Kenny. A question? <laughs> <laughs> well, what year did they put? No, I'm just not gonna do that. I wanna know more about this guitar I'm holding. I don't know anything about it. I never, I didn't know we were doing the, this. Is this a limited run? It's, a few, it's a few years old. It's limited, it's just, you know, the ones that are stamped custom and stuff come available to, of course, a five-star dealer. So it was strictly for a five-star dealer? Well, you know, limited pieces, there were just a few of them made, and I think I bought two of them, sold one, kept one. The first uh, cool custom acoustic I saw from Gibson was in this store. It was a white dove. Uh, white. That, man, I wanted that guitar so bad. I even tried to sell it to uh, to a few people for you. I guess you eventually sold it. Yeah, I had a lady in uh, like South Carolina bought a Doves in Flight from me that I picked up in Nashville, one of Wren's uh, archetype. And uh, when I sent that guitar to her, I sent Brant's big layout of that white Doves in Flight, and she called me immediately and bought that guitar. Amazing. So she bought them both. But I see yeah, several. I really you know interesting custom guitars especially the gold top j45 i just can't believe that's still here tribute to les paul what does it mean to be a five-star dealer what does it mean yeah 
Well, I, I guess you have to have the money, right? <laughs> <laughs> Five star dealer, you know, they're they 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 have they're up on sales. They they only carry you know the custom the custom shop from Montana, right? Well, one of the big things is that they get exclusive guitars made exclusive from just custom them. shop, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're called Luthier's Choice Guitars, and they're not offered to any of the big chain stores or any dealer that's not a five-star dealer. So it's an elite group of people who are committed to you know getting passion. The poor guitar passion product. is the first requirement. You gotta love it. And there's not many of them. No. I mean, you're you're the only five-star dealer in Missouri. I think so. As far as I know. There's only like 20, 20 something in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And they, they get to feature their inventory on Gibson's website so he can take a picture of each one of these guitars and as he brings new product in they add that to the lineup and they're, they're just dedicated to having more and yeah they, they also have uh, certified acoustic specialists so a, a five-star dealer makes a significant not only investment in you know unique inventory but also to committing to taking you know an intense Gibson Acoustic University education and, and really are the kind of premier locations yeah that's for right acoustic guitars they uh, will send um, selected members of the sales team here to Montana to to be in the factory and train with the people who are making these guitars and that makes a difference that's to me is the most amazing thing is the factories you know the the amount of, Steve mentioned passion the amount of passion that goes into these guitars being built uh, I was gonna say this a second ago but I got sidetracked when when I every time I see go go to the factory to get some sort of training or, or anything like that I always walk out of there going these guitars are not enough money you know, they're, they're, they should be sold a lot more than that, con considering the amount of work and time that goes into them. You know, because if you get a chance to, I don't you know, Montana, they don't do tours, do they? No, not public tours. Memphis does a tour. If you tell them you're from Dexter Music Center, they'll let you in. There you go. I promise. <laughs> yeah. And if, if anybody does go to any of the tours, company. always mention Dexter Music Center, and you'll get a VIP treatment. I promise. That is true. They said I could say that. So. Yeah. But yeah. when you look at the uh, Gibson Acoustic Factory and the amount of guitars they produce per day, I mean, it's no more than 50. I, would, I think it's it's less than 60 every day. And compared with the other like brands. Like USA. And, and, yeah. And compared with the other brands of acoustic guitars, uh, it just it's a, a boutique custom shop all the way. They're not doing it. A thousand guitars a day with a bolt on neck. Like, like, like what, what does USA do? They do like, we do like 600, 600 a day? 600. Custom Shop Electric does 75, maybe. So our USA Custom Shop is in Nashville. We do all our acoustics in Bozeman, Montana. And then we have the Memphis, excuse me, the Memphis Division, which is really cool now because they just strictly arch tops and doing everything historically correct. Uh, they do tours there, and I think you can probably even see some online stuff. Man, I strongly recommend it because if you're looking to buy a guitar, it's an investment. You know, you know, don't settle for anything less. Settle for the best, right? And if it's a matter of just a few hundred dollars more, you know, why not? Uh, I have never been let down by these guitars on any level. Uh, in the '80s, I was. Totally guilty for playing stuff like Ibanez and <laughs> Washburn. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and uh, you know they're good guitars, but when I when I had a choice, like what were they thinking? Well, because they were throwing free stuff at me. But you know I always fell back on these guitars to the point, to it came to a point where I was like, okay, well. I don't need an endorsement because I'm just going to play these no matter what happens. Well, it's funny you see Metallica on tour and they have their you know guitars that they yeah. play live with. And then, and then the you studio. see in the studio they have Les Paul Customs and all the <laughs> vintage stuff. Yeah. You know that 
that there are 58 V's and they uh, used to make the records with. So, yeah. you know, a lot of the companies that have bolt on necks and polyurethane finishes where you hit it with a UV light and it's dry in minutes, right. um, they're just assembling guitars. They're not really building them. And this doesn't take a luthier's skill to build the guitar it's, if it's a bolt on neck. Right. And these guitars, they're all. It's a set neck and the nitrous oil. I think everyone can hear me, but. Thank you. Yes, you were talking at the end about of my speech. You were talking about a finish a second ago, and that's one of the main things that Gibson does is in our finish. It's a nitrocellulose lacquer. It's it's paper thin, and it allows the tone woods to age right. So when you see those guitars and the, and the, the finish is coming off and they're changing colors and they're cracking, you don't go, oh my god. You go, wow, awesome, because. The guitar is sounding a hundred times better, and it's sounding the way it was meant to. And polyurethane, which a majority of companies use, it's not a bad thing. It's again, it's probably preference to some people. It's protective more than it is conducive. To it's a it's a hard plastic, pretty much. It never ages, and you want your wood to age because you're buying this guitar for specifically tone wood. You know, which is you know your mahogany. Spruce, Koa. Another thing that we do is we use hide glue on all the neck joints, and it's a, a double tapered dovetail neck joint, which means it, it fits so tight. If you didn't glue it, it you know you, you can have a hard time pulling it out. And the hide glue dries to such a thin um, you know, bond between the, the two pieces of wood. It's almost like the wood is stuck to wood with an organic material. That's the best type of glue that you can use and you have to stand over a vat of boiling glue to, to make that happen. You couldn't do a thousand of those a day. So, right. so we, we going back to the way that they were originally made and, and what made them great the first time. Everything we did in the 30s. Uh, That's lot, what we're doing now. Of those things are really uh, shining through today. Yeah and going over to our custom shop uh, I mean everything they do over there is BOS you know vintage original specs and if they're not as good as they used to be they're better because of the amount of time we've had to perfect what the, what was started you know about that stood for very old stuff yeah no, vintage original specs. what did I say I said very old stuff oh. uh, I was making a joke but you it, it went over my head <laughs> I still jet lagged yeah but if you, if you want something that you can keep forever, hand down through generations of the family, uh, this is the quality. And it'll guitar. get better. It's an investment quality instrument. And uh, if you're a buy, sell, trade kind of person, it retains its value. Just that, that right there, tier. that's a good point to bring up because the majority of your guitars that you buy can't do that. You know, you, this, like I said before, this is an investment. And you know it's a lot of money, but you can always get it back out of it. You know, uh, a lot of other guitars you can't do that with. You know, good point. Yeah. yeah. Are you playing some more, Mike? I'll do one more. I guess. One more. Yeah. Mr. Mike Scotch. Yeah.
Thank you for assisting me there. Yeah. 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 I need to find that thing for smoking, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, yeah, I, if Steve will let you play on this thing, it is amazing. Uh, I don't know what the price is on this, but it's... Not for sale. It's not for sale? I don't think so. It's Steve's I wouldn't sell it. It's his fa favorite guitar, I think. It, it's, it was throwing me off because I wasn't... <laughs> Expected. Well, you know, that's another yeah. thing. Uh, if you wanted a guitar like that, there's, uh, get them in. we could have one custom ordered, custom made, anything you can think of within reason. Thank you guys Thanks, again.